All right. Hey, yeah, we got one minute. Continue. <laughs> there's Ed's room. You're right. And there, there's Pluto. Hey. There's Pluto. <laughs> oh, Ed, good to see you again. Same here. Um, did any of the emails that I sent have any meaning? Absolutely. Uh, last one uh, I got to follow up on. Uh, I took the print circuit board out, looked at it, didn't get a picture of it, but it was very clean on both sides. Well, that if you pull out an interface chip, it generally doesn't have any physical manifestations. In other words, the top isn't blown out or, or there's no smoke or fire. You just killed a little bitty transistor down inside of it. Now it doesn't work anymore. So uh, I, I don't know what, how on the CGX mount, the interface from the real world to the uh, microprocessor that's inside that controls everything. Uh, I did find another schematic today, which I didn't bother to copy, where it shows all of the uh, control lines coming directly into the pick without any um, uh, ESD protection or overload voltage protection or, you know, just stupid. I was talking to Tom about this before you came online. Uh, for the cost of a couple of four cents diodes and a two cent resistor, you can very much protect the inputs against stupidity, but they don't plan, they don't do that. So, um, you know, if uh, that's why I said take a picture so I can see the, the uh, part number, the parts that are on there, the actual part value, the part uh, nomenclature. And, uh, hmm. you know, you know it's, a, it's a very small, but, small printed circuit oh, board. I, I know. And, and, and SOIC8 ICs are very small. So you can get a whole lot of them on there if you need to. Um, so, you know, it might be a, you know, 7404 or 7409, you know, standard or 74CO4 or whatever standard CMOS chip that you can buy from Mauser for a buck and a half or less. And, uh, you know, so we just, un we remove it. I have the hot air gun, the tiny hot air gun, everything else. You just eat it up, take it off, put a new one down. But from what I can see, at least on the one schematic that I found, uh, Celestron wasn't that erudite. They didn't think it through or some accountant got in the way. Uh, he pointed out in the beginning that there's a controlling device in the main tube that goes up and that your air that I get is uh, 16 and air 17 are generated in that main tube. Okay, I've seen the picture. Okay, so that's in the, the pier part of the tube. Correct. All right. Well, we need so to get pictures of what's in that too. So Ed, you're seeing the errors on your hand controller. You're seeing those show up there. Yes. Yeah. That's good. That's really because, good because that means the microprocessor in the the mount in the pedestal is talking to the hand controller. Everything is working except the drivers to the motors. That is, I could probably do a star search or whatever I want to do. I just can't get there with the mount. All right. Did so you we've got to find out. You have to peel the layers of this onion. You know, where is the problem? And since Celestron is, uh, they won't give you schematics. Uh, I'm, I'm, the schematics that I found, I found in patent disclosures and things like that, where they have to give you the schematics. Uh, so we need to know how things are connected so we can make a, 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 a reasoned judgment as to what's going on. Where, where, where's the problem? You trace the signal through. You hook it up the way it's supposed to run, and you with an oscilloscope, which you know you can bring your stuff over here. We can do all this stuff. We trace it through and say, "Oh, it's right here. This chip, this chip is not working." And if it's a 74 CO, <clears throat> CO8 or something like that, which you buy for 43 cents, it'll cost you five seven dollars ninety five cents to get a ship from Mauser. But uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, I may have some anyway. Uh, so you replace the chip. That's, you know, but we don't know. We just don't have the information. I can try a request. I talked to the guys at uh, Celestron, and uh -huh. the one guy was very uh, amenable to most everything. Uh, oh, he'll send you parts? I, oh, no, not parts. I don't have parts. 
Okay. But, uh, as far as getting a circuit, maybe I could get a circuit for it. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'll try to do that. Ed, Ed what was those error numbers you said you saw? 16 and 17. Uh, so let's search. So Bob, we see you there. How's, how's your observatory doing? Yeah. No, it's really coming along. Um, yeah, I want to share about that. I got some photos for you. Oh, cool. Mike Chipnick is coming in. Get another box on yeah, the screen. I think Mike would be very interested in seeing this. Yeah. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. Oh, Dick Hi, Beam Mike. is coming on. Oh, Mike's the yeah, top Dick, Dick also. He, he. Oh, hello, Bob. There's hey, Dick. Dick. Hey. Let's see if I can get some better light here. There we go. Hey, yeah, we don't be want to Johnny see Johnny Cash. We don't yeah. want to see you in the, see that you dates in the shadows. Me. <laughs> that dates me. Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. All right, the, Mike, go ahead. The bad news is that I found two more pieces of the uh, dome cracking. Oh and, no! Uh oh. Uh, and so, so it's just a uh, it's just a thermoplastic casting. It doesn't have any fiberglass in it. No. That's cheap. That's and um, I I I can see where one particular uh, couple particular wheels. Um, that it flexes. You could see it from outside pushing up on the on the plastic and deforming it as it's rotating over. So um, mm. I wrote to Babic asking him what type of plastic it is to see if mm. I can bond something to the area where the wheel goes on to strengthen it, to give it some rigidity so that it won't break. Um, and uh, so I'm, you know, it's the first night that it's clear and I'm here because I'm out of business, so to speak, until I get that fixed. What you can do rather than bond, try to bond something to it is to actually weld to it. You take a, uh, uh, a, a, Strength well, have, material like fiberglass well, cloth or or uh, carbon fiber, and you get with with a uh, cribbing you you uh, position them out so whatever the crack is is closed, and then with the like fiberglass you that and a hot a hot iron you physically melt it into the surface of the plastic so I you're not to, bonding anything to it. I have to see if that's compatible with that. So I need to know what the plastic is so that well, I Well, no, have... you don't need to know what the plastic is because you're going to melt it. You haven't added plastic. You're simply going to melt into the surface of the plastic a reinforcing material like fiberglass cloth. Hmm. I've done that many times. I have fixed, I can't tell you how many plastic things I've welded back together that way. I typically hmm. use uh, carbon fiber. Huh. Mike, on that on that design there. Yes. Now, is the bottom of your dome is there like a middle ring there, or does it just ride on the dome itself somehow? The the wheels. Okay, if you allow me about ten seconds, I can bring you the piece to show you what it looks like uh -huh. and show you show you my problem. I'll yeah. Be right back. Now, Tom, I, uh, after uh, Mike's done, I'd like to go ahead because I'm an hour behind everybody yeah. here. And, uh, that and sounds I, fair. Uh, I, need to, I need to get to bed at a decent hour here. <laughs> I've been working on this observatory and I'm tired. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Right. Okay, it's, go it's, ahead. It's, it's, you said you had some picture to share you wanted to share it with us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me... Uh, let me bring up this. Um, let's see here what I want to do. Uh, I'll get this down. Okay, Mike. Um, Mike, we're gonna well, we're gonna let we're gonna let Bob uh, Bob Richard go. 
Okay. Because he's got to get get at, get the bed quicker. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Where's my what I want here? Here we go. Share screen. Okay. All right. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm oh, starting right from the beginning. Hey, that's uh, a good looking telescope, by the way. I know that is Bruce's eight <laughs> inch on there. Um, uh, I'm starting here because this is the slab uh, that the, the uh, observatory is on. The, it, one thing that's really, really important we're learning is that you need to really have a level foundation. So yep. if you're going to do this, man, make sure it's really level because otherwise all kinds of problems follow. So when uh, they did this, they told the contractors that this slab had to, slab had to be perfectly level, and it is. It's a, they did a great job uh, of that. So, um, okay. Let me see here. So, Bob, you, the, you didn't want the slab to have a, like a water could run off it. It's just perfectly level. Yeah, yeah. The uh, water, you know, it, it will run off. You don't want it to pond. That's for sure. And there's, there, I've been out there after it's rained. There's no ponding, and it will just enough water. It will run off. Uh, and so uh, it, it, but make make sure make sure it is level. That's really important. Um, okay, and I'm gonna. So, Dick, is your observatory slab level? Uh, yeah, pretty much. But I think that Bob Richards' design no. is particularly important because. The design of that observatory is built in quadrants. So if you're going to do that, you've got a real problem. With mine, you've got a whole complete ring of stuff. So you just have to make sure that you mount that level. The wheel ring is the most important thing. Get that wheel ring level and everything else doesn't really matter. But his is more important because it's built in quadrants. Okay, uh, I want to see. I want to get. Uh, I want to get. Uh, to so, Mike, your picture Mike, here. your observatory. It's on a on plywood, right? It's on a uh, plywood platform made out of uh, four by fours. Mm -hmm. um, every fourteen or. 16 inches it's it's a it's a real rigid like i can jump on it and it feels real you know steady four and then four. i leveled it too it's not you know how many degrees off it's from level i don't know but anyways uh bob you were you were saying something he's still looking for yeah his, I'm, still looking some, I'm, I'm trying to get i'm trying to get some more of okay. these uh the photos on here. Hold on a minute. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. So, Ed, are you are you Ed? Are you gonna build an observatory? Uh, not here. There's. I'm right next to a shopping center. The lights too much horrible. light. Way too much light. Ever since they put in the LED street lights, they just killed astronomy. Yeah. Without getting That's, out of town. Well. Um, also, if you read the, the uh, February of uh, Sky and Telescope, there, there, no, it wasn't Sky and Telescope. It was the reflector from the Astronomical League. They're talking about tens of thousands of satellites going up for communication. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Elon Musk. No, it's also Hughes. Hughes plans on having oh. probably several times more. Don't forget oh, the yeah. Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! You got your uh, your dome. Yeah, this this is the crate that came in. Okay, it's weighs thousand pounds, and uh, shipped on flatbed truck. But that's what it looks like when it comes. It's it's all uh, in there, compacted in there. So that, that that yeah, that's how it looks. 
What? How uh, big is that? Is that like eight by eight by what? Maybe six or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's approximately it. Yeah. That's about what mine yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's approximately that. Yeah. So. Uh, that's amazing. Um. Yeah, let's see. A lot of people still waiting for their domes to come. Uh, yeah. My friend Mark said yeah. that he's not going to get his. They they told him till um, a one or two years. What, wow. what company? Wow. Oh, what what gosh, company, I, Mike? I forget. It's one of the major ones. They just can't get the material. Uh, Time uh, to go with a different company. Uh, cancel uh, the order. Uh, <sighs> um. He's, he's looked through them. And it could be that Bob ha has the same company, but got his before Mark did, you know. Um. Okay, I want to get. Uh... Huh. There we go. Okay, I just, I'm just going to go with this. It's quicker here. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, okay, this is. See if I can bring it. Here we go. All right. Then when we open up the crate, and that's what we got. It's really packed tightly. In wow, there. that is something. And yeah, no kidding. Um, and the the wheels are attached. Five, yeah, I know. They're no the wheels. Those are the openings for the wheels, but they're not in, in there. We had to put them in. We just did that recently. So um, this came last Friday. We opened it up and we saw this, you know, and uh, so then, uh, do, excuse me, do you want to close the door? That's what I think about it. You can close the door. Oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's, yeah. And uh, uh, let's see. So it is called a pro-dome. Pro-dome, yeah. What is the diameter? Ten feet. Ten feet. Okay. Yeah, it's home dome feet. that makes it. Yeah, home dome. Okay. Yeah. So um, then uh, <laughs> we pulled that stuff out, and here's what we came up with. <laughs> it's all the pieces, and the wall pieces. The dome, here are the dome pieces. The wall pieces. And a whole bunch of different pieces. These are the door pieces. So we just kind of all laid it out there. And uh, um, and then um, this gives you an idea of, of how it's coming together. So the way this works is you you, you buy. Uh, these concentric, they're, and there's the three sections to each wall piece. So we got two of them, plus this, which is the, this is the top thing in which the dome rides. And these are the rollers here. They, they're not installed yet. But, uh, where are you, where are you pointing? I, I just see a bunch of pictures up here when you, are you addressing one of them or? He's got an arrow on the one that has the wall. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Can you, do you see the large, uh, large view of this one? I, I blew it up here. I don't know if you can see it. No. All we see screen? is is the all the pictures together in the gallery. Yeah. Oh, you know, all together. Oh. The gallery yeah. view is what we're seeing. So, right Bob, uh, yeah. let, let me mention that on Zoom. You know, when you do the share screen, you know, the you come, you know, when you do it in Zoom and share screen, it comes up with a box and it shows you windows, but. If you look on the right side of that box, you can drag it down, and there's more windows uh, uh, available to choose from. Sometimes, if you have a lot of windows open, so if you have you if you if you double click on that picture, it should open up in in uh, photos in a large size, and then you can find you can stop sharing that Explorer screen and then find the photo screen to sh to share instead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay. But sometimes mm. it's sometimes Zoom hides those extra screens to share. There if you have more than 10 screens, it'll hide some yeah, 10 windows. I, I, there is a way to I had this set up so there was a way to get this out of here. 
Uh, let me see. The arrow is good uh, enough for, for me. I just didn't notice it. Uh, let me let me do this. Let's see. So What's you this? didn't go with the three three at the bottom. Uh, you just went with two for the walls, and then that top guy is the top ring that the dome rides on. Yeah, correct. Okay. That's right. Okay, gotcha. So it this is this this is the um, the way it looks. This is our model. So you got one, two, mm -hmm. and then three the top. That this is what ours will look like. Okay. When it's okay. Done. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, now, just some comments on this for you guys that are interested in maybe going this route. Uh, the materials are excellent. Uh, the workmanship, the fiberglass, I mean, it's really first class. And uh, it's all it packaged very carefully. Nothing, nothing was damaged. Everything came, you know, pristine. So, you know, that's great. Um, then assembly is challenging <laughs> yeah there are a lot of parts to this so you need at least one other person and maybe a couple of people to help you assemble it and uh, we started assembling it on uh monday and so here it is tuesday tomorrow we're going to put the dome on so uh the dome will go on and uh we hope to finish that up and then we got a rainy day thursday we probably won't be working on it and then friday we hope we're going to finish it up mm -hmm. so the 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 problem uh is the biggest drawback as far as i'm concerned is the construction manual uh, there is a video you can watch um uh, but that's not really that helpful in the field um and I, i'm gonna uh recommended jerry smith who's the owner i think that it would be worth him to hire a professional outfit that would design a three-dimensional schematic that would would show how things fit together uh because now it, it's it's mostly written with some some drawings but i think a three-dimensional schematic um that's probably done professionally. I mean, there are people that do these things that can draw them and uh, be probably worth his while to hire hire somebody to do it. But uh, that's that's my only. I'd say that's my only complaint about this now. Uh, Jerry uh, Jerry Smith's been very accessible. I've called him several times about questions. You know, what do we do here? How do we deal with this? And so on. And he's been very good at getting back. He's been very helpful. Even when we had a delayed delivery, this, this thing got stuck in Phoenix at the freight terminal in Phoenix. It was sitting there for several days. And he worked with us to try to get it out to us in Scottsdale. So, uh, so thus far, so good. Um, you know, I, I think, I think this is a high quality, it's a high quality operation. Can I ask you a question on that? Yeah. Uh, what what I assume the dome rides on rollers on a track. Correct. Uh, it rides on rollers, not a track. Right. What right. keeps the dome down if there's a high windstorm that wants to lift it off? Uh, okay. Uh, can you see my arrow here? Uh, yeah. The small. Okay. All right. There's a lip here. Yeah. And and when the, the dome comes down and it has a lip and it fits under here. And it's then it's under the uh, lip. Yeah. So it, it, it fits under here. And then there's a skirt that fits under the lip that comes down over the side. The the skirt, you can see it right here. This yeah. thing right here. Yeah. Um that's a skirt. So that that keeps it uh, from being lifted off by a wind. Okay, so the and rollers we just finished. The, the rollers ride on top of a rail, or do they ride on the bottom of a rail? Uh, the rollers are recessed down, and they ride on an axis. They're just below the surface. Here. Oh, I see. The so rollers in, they just come up over the surface. So you're saying the rollers are fixed? Yeah. They yeah, the rollers are fixed. Else. Okay, good. I got it. Thank you. The, the 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 dome moves the rollers dome yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 a it's a neat design yeah it's a good and, design uh, yeah yeah it's a good design 
And it's really, um, it looks to me like it, it, there's no wind that's going to take that off when when it's all together. Um, yeah. And and then he claims it won't. I mean, he says, but they've had these things to, you know, 100 mile an hour hurricanes and they survived. So, they, so is the dome, is the dome set on top and then not really latched down or does it, is it latched down somehow? Uh, it's, there is. Sometimes yeah, there, they do that. They just. I'll like, bet the yeah. lip is applied after they put the dome on. They probably put the lip on from the inside. Uh -huh. Yeah, because sometimes so, they don't uh, even. Uh, they, yeah. they just let them ride. On yeah. Top, and they don't even. Well, this you know, the each of these quadrants. There are four quadrants that make up the dome, and each quadrant has a lip that goes under here. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a skirt that's right under the lip and, do it. and it extends down. So the, it's the bottom of the skirt that actually rides on the rollers. So the skirt is this, is this thing here. Yeah. <laughs> this little piece you see here, that's a skirt. That's what actually rides on the rollers. Okay. And uh, it, it appears to me that, um, and then it's fastened down when the when the shutter's closed, it's fastened down to the front door. So mm -hmm. uh, and locked. Uh, there's a whole locking mechanism here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is the whole the guy? What is the whole dome locked against intruders? Can if you leave it, yes, for a week, can yes, key and lock it. Yes, it's all locked. I mean, okay. there's. This door, there's a door here, door here that opens. Yeah. And then, and then, well, here, this is good. This, this is not ours. This is the finished one. Okay. But this shows the door will open, and then here's the, the opening of the dome. Right. Uh, so you can walk in standing up, which is a very cool feature. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're finished, you pull. The shutter down. The three yeah. pieces to the shutter they overlap. You pull the shutter down, and it locks with the door. The door locks, so everything's locked. <laughs> it's all locked in one. In, in, it's not one unit, but it's all interlinked. Yeah. So the dome, the dome rides up. When the door is closed, it's part of the track that the dome rides on. Yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it motorized? So, yeah, there's a little. Uh, yes, we got the motor for it. Yeah, we decided to get the motor. You can also motorize the shutter, but uh, I was talking with uh, with uh, with with uh, and talking with the owner about that, and he says, "Well." The only time he recommends a motorized shutter if it's a remotely operated observatory. He says that otherwise the shutter is really easy. Gary Smith says the shutter is really easy to open and close. Okay. So he didn't recognize he didn't recommend the motor. Yeah, that's a very nice design. I like are it. you are you getting yeah. automation with the ro rotation control or are you just gonna do it manually? Uh manually. Okay. You can get automation. Yeah, I yeah, saw it. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of good observatory um, software to run that dome for you when you're looking. Go to it'll run the dome automatically for you. Yeah, that's something we can look into yeah. after we get it going. Yeah, it's an and easy. I may want to. I may want to come back and get some ideas from you guys on that. Um, mm -hmm. So um, because right now. Um, uh, what I'm working on electronically after we get this thing going is uh, is uh, taking the image from the, uh, the camera and um, in the, to a computer in the observatory and then using uh, uh, what's the name of the program uh, Team Viewer. I don't know if you're familiar with Team Viewer or not, but T Team Viewer allows us, allows the computer in the room that you want to view it takes over literally takes over the computer and the observatory and then so you get the same image like if i'm 
if I'm uh, showing an image, say with one of my ethic cameras, uh, that is stacking images, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> stacking images, and it's developing on the screen, we can actually take that computer over in the, in the observatory and show it on the computer in the room where the people are, and then use an HDMI cable and plug it into a television. So you actually will be able to see the image developing right there uh -huh. on the TV. Yeah, so, so Bob, people who have, yes. I was curious, at, at, in, the, in the ring, the top ring here where you see that you have the picture where the guy, it's kind of highlighted right now where the guys are putting on the top ring. Uh, uh, here, those, right here. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. holes in the those holes in the top ring, that's where the rollers go, is that right? Correct, correct. Yep, that's where the rollers go. Okay. Rollers are really, uh, they're bearing, they have sleeves, they're not roller, they're not ball bearing. They have sleeves, but they roll very, very easily. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty, they're about the, the rollers are probably about i don't know three inches in diameter they're not small uh, so uh so yeah i i'm uh i'm thinking once we get this all together uh, it's going to be pretty nifty um and it will be big enough to get uh, people in a few people inside at once and uh and this door, this this door is big enough to allow people in walkers to get through, but not wheelchairs. Uh, for the wheelchair people, we're going to need to do the uh, transmittal of the image to the TV in a near. It's a very nearby lounge that, that will send it. So and that's so also Bob, a great, yeah. So what, once you're inside the observatory and you turn the dome, you're locked yeah. in, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you you, you turn the dome, right? And you you yeah. So you have to you have to, to get in and out. You have to rotate the dome so you can open the door up because <laughs> the the door <coughs> right here the door has a roller <coughs> on the top, so the the dome rolls over yeah so you can't in other words you can't open the door while you're using the scope in a position uh is that what i'm hearing uh you know that's a good question dick i excuse me i got a tip on my throat um uh, that's a good question um I have to wait and see uh, let's try it out and see if we can can rotate <coughs> me, rotate the dome across this opening without having a tragedy. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer. To that. That's something we'll have to look at because that would be nice. You could get in and out while you're in there. Just duck down and get out. And um, well, the door is locked closed. You can't because the dome had rolled over it then, so you can't open it. Well, yeah, I'm just saying that I don't know if you can actually turn the dome and bring it across there with the door open or whether yeah. it, it won't do that. I, I'll bet you you can. I would think so because, yeah. oh, man, that would really limit the use of it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's. That's something we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah, this whole, you know, you just, um, <laughs> it's, it's a mental exercise, you guys, putting this together. It's like you're working with <laughs> a giant erector set trying to figure out all the parts work. And uh, it's really fun in our staff, the, the CEO, right here in this picture in the wall here, that's our CEO. He's working on it. He's loving it. <laughs> he's, Dang. He's, he's 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 as excited as I am about this. I'm That's, not kidding you. It's really funny. So he's out there, and then this is staff that's helping him. So uh, we'll begin again uh, at two o'clock tomorrow, working on it. 
but uh, we're having a fun time, you know, we're having a fun time putting it together, you know, and everybody's cool. I mean, nobody's getting all frustrated and, you know, I see this, you know, oh, we got a problem. We keep thinking through and looking at it. Oh, we got to figure this out. I've called Jerry a couple of times and talked with him. We're stuck. What do we do? And so, you know, he's very helpful. Um, so anyway, so far, so good, you guys. Yeah. And, uh. And we'll uh, we'll get I'll get back to you uh, further when we're further along and get it done. Absolutely. And uh, have some more questions. So so Bob, how long is the warranty for that thing? <laughs> it's forever. It's forever. Fiberglass is forever. <laughs> really? Great. Yeah, they don't know what to do with the old boats. They can't yeah, mm -hmm. fiberglass won't wear out or rot. So <laughs> No, well, that it'll burn. It, it, it'll burn, right? They burn it up. No, that the the thing that's that's cool about this is that the factory uh, uh, techno technical innovations is right near a uh, a boat manufacturer. So they have an arrangement with the boat manufacturer that produces these pieces of fiberglass that are marine grade. So the finish is like on a like on a nice boat that's what it looks like i mean it's really nice and uh and it's tough and durable you just have to wash it and uh, maybe how occasionally about, wax it how yeah. about sun exposure uv does that limit the lifetime of it no fiberglass is you won't have uh, like I, i'm really sorry to hear about uh uh, uh um, Mike. Mike, yeah, sorry. Mike's experience because, you know, that's not good. That should not be. Uh, but uh, that that cannot happen with this material. Just it can't okay. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so, sure that a well written letter to Cloudy Nights or one of the astronomy magazines would probably get some action. <clears throat> yeah, you, know, you you sold me a piece of junk. It cracks. Yeah. Where, 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 where is the strength yeah, of the members at? Anyway, it, he was on. I, I don't know where Mike went. Yeah. He's oh, right well, there. I just heard more about what happened. He's his. turned off his mic, so we can't. Okay, hear. I'm right here. Okay, oh, here you go. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thin material, okay. and I can. You can then yeah, go ahead and show that, Mike. I, yeah, I'm done. let's see. I mean, you go ahead and talk, talk okay. about that. Yeah, he's got to stop okay. caring. So, this is the bottom part. Okay, if you take a look here. Okay, this is where the wheel goes right here with that. I've got silver tape on here. So, there we go, Mike. The one that's cracked. There we yeah, go. Yeah, this is the one that's cracked. And I, there we go. I tried to. Okay, and and the thing is, is that the the wheel is a skateboard wheel, so it's just like a finger. Yeah. It's like yeah. a small point. Okay, so what I did was I put some uh, silver tape on here, and it's fairly rigid. But I noticed that I can push the part that's cracked with this on here. So the first thought was, you know, silver tape to fix it. But you know, you can take this stuff. Look how flimsy it is. So in other mm -hmm. words, the wheel is riding right on that material. It's riding on this the section metallic. right here. Yeah. Okay. They, they have no installed, no rail. No rail right. at all. No, no rail at all. Oh my, yeah. That doesn't seem like a real good way to go. Well, you can go to the other side of that and bond the fiberglass or, or uh, uh, weld fiberglass onto it so that see all these things uh, are, are good in compression but they're weak in tension especially the plastics they're they're strong for the first uh dozen or two dozen or five dozen uh <laughs> exercises stretches and then they finally break so you muted uh, yourself again mike you're muted mike okay there you, you can see where the wheel as it goes over does this type of thing to the plastic yeah it's okay it. yeah so it yeah. needs some reinforcement yeah that's right that's right um mm -hmm. this week uh i got my um 
interferometer working a lot better. And I can show you, if you want to, um, some of the results. I can say that I'm still not out of the woods as far as operation, but um, I, um, let me, let me bring up my, whoops. One second, share screen. Okay, so here, let me just put this up here. Oops. Okay, so um, this is the iGram that, that I took. That looks good. <clears throat> well, it, it leaves something to be desired, but um, basically what let me into trouble was on the bottom part here. Uh -huh. I risked my mirror on, on closed cell foam packing foam, which is really nice for stress relief, but it gets in the way and that causes the, the software to go glitchy. Um, and also um, I cleaned the optics and um, um, have the rotation of the beam splitter was a little um, needed to be done. Now, the, the next thing you do is you go to the analyze. Okay, and this is the Fourier transform. Let me just put this, let me just uh, need to move you guys out of the way. Um, so this is what you need. Um, and I wasn't getting that. I was only getting a single spot here and none of these two other ones. So this is what it uses to do a compute surface. Okay, and that gives you to your results here, okay where um, this is the, the surface here. And it's telling me that I got a, I, I got a crappy, uh, a, a real crappy mirror. Now I'm not sure if that's true or not because I'm able to split the double double and I see stuff on Jupiter. So I'm still not out of the woods as far as operating it. And I can go to full screen. I don't know, if you see the full screen now? Yeah. Okay. So this is how the software looks like. Okay, so it's saying that I got pretty horrendous. Uh, okay, back to this here. And then there's another. Wait a minute, this, what's the vertical scale there with the colors? Oh, um, it's- uh, No, up right, above. This part error that's moving up and down feet. is two waves of error, it says. Yeah. Okay, so- That's oh, two waves? It says that I have two waves of error, but I don't see how that could be because if you can see stuff on Jupiter and you can split close double stars, this is I'm yeah. Still, but what's the uh, where's what's the part of the mirror that doesn't count because of your secondary? What's the error in just the part that you see contributing to the image? Well, it's this here. It's considerable amounts, like all, all about one wavelength. Yeah, but that's uh, on the on the bottom here. I could uh, okay. Hold a second here. Is this a function I, of the way your mirror is mounted, or the uh, the uh, tension? Or it the could be. It it could be. I just I'm I'm not I'm I'm not sure. I you know I'm I'm troubleshooting this a bit. So mm -hmm. you know um, here. Hold a second. I just got it uh, made to go off in the never never land. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, and oh, come on, it's 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 doing its thing here. Um, let me show you uh, another part of this software is to show you what the um, airy circle is supposed to look like with this mirror. And unfortunately, I've got this. Uh, it's it's doing something here. Well, while this is trying to make up its mind. It's going through all these different images. It's gonna take a while. I'm gonna do a stop share, but I wanna show you something that might mean that our CCD cameras are obsolete now. Because <laughs> Canon has just come out. Have you seen this here? Canon develops a sensor that can shoot- This is giving the me a partial page. Can you shrink it down a little bit or? Okay. Um, What's the URL on that? Petapal, pet, petapixel. Petapixel. 
Yeah. All right. Well, let's just okay. go there. Okay. So basically, what it is is um, it's a, it's a th this one's a three point two million mega a million pixel sensor with a single photon avalanche diode uh, um, pixels. In other words, one one photon will will give you an image. <clears throat> Okay, we were talking about something like that before where we were talking about avalanche diodes. Yeah, but it's still, it's still a Bayer pattern filter, but it does, it's just very sensitive. Yeah, well, all you need to do is just take the Bayer uh, yeah. uh, pattern off of it, but we're talking about- Yeah, single, it's very sensitive. Yeah, super sensitive. So yeah. um, this, uh, I'll, I'll send this to you guys, mm -hmm. um, but- um, it, uh, you know, that somebody's actually doing it. It looks like uh, mm -hmm. Canon might win out on uh, on uh, Sony as far as maybe. Um, maybe, or maybe Sony's got it and not telling you. SBR, SBRC started making avalanche photodiodes like this in Mercad Telluride and for red wavelength materials about, yeah. nine, about 2000. Yeah. But, but, but anyways, um, I figure in five years, it'll yeah. be an astronomical cameras that'll be oh, uh, <laughs> in Orion. I'm sure, I, yeah. <laughs> Orion telescope. Sure. Okay, let me well, see if I, uh, if my thing has, okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is what um, it's saying that my, my point spread function looks like, which is not true because I get pretty much sharp stars that it's seeing limited. Uh -huh. So there's something I'm still doing wrong. And then there's the wrong key. And um, this is kind of like um, showing. Um, so there, there's something I'm still doing wrong, but I'm I'm getting closer. At least I'm getting to the point where this is happening. However, yeah. I'm not getting anything with the strel ratio. I should be getting strel, and for whatever reason, I can't find the place where it talks about um, the difference in the two beams uh, between the beams of the. Um, uh, the reference and the the the, the, the diverging uh, beam. Uh, so, um, so, how are you mounting the mirrors when you make these tests? Okay, I can sh I can show you. Good. Okay, let me just because I've got the whole second here. Uh, let me go back to my. Okay, and let me try go back to Zoom here without. Okay, so here's my mirror. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so what I did was I put a little piece of foam on the bottom there to lift it above the closed cell foam that I had. Okay, and I implemented this is sort of like self-locking with the the fiber board that keeps the the mirror now tilting forward and this is the beam i think part of my problem is i could be the laser the guy doesn't think so but this is the um reference beam that gets diverted out you can see in the middle of it is this dark streak okay and this is um Excuse me here. Um, okay, hopefully I'm not going to too, uh, too quickly with this. Okay. Um, okay, these are the two beams, okay, without the diverging lens in there. And they're supposed to be pretty close. And basically, I this distance is the distance between the two beams exiting the interferometer. So that's probably the best location. But you can see here and over here, it's split in the middle. And so where it wants to go get an interferometer, it's looking at the dark section of the uh, um, of, 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 of the uh, 
of, of the beam. So yeah, that's that's my mirror. And I'll take you that. Is it a half inch thick? It's uh it's six tenths, seven tenths of an inch thick. Okay. So I suppose what I really need to do is support it with a with a strap instead of like this, but uh, that would help also if you could put it in your telescope tube and have the mirror laying down on its back on whatever suspension system you have, and then have the um, uh, interferometer looking down at it. Hmm. Well, gravity, you get rid of gravity. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if my ceiling is high enough for me to do that. Okay. And, and it can <clears throat> It'd be it'd be looking straight up. I, I could bring it into the garage and have it look horizontal, and that would be good. Um, I ha I have noticed that I don't didn't see any distortion with the the sling system, so maybe I yeah sling would be the first step. Yeah. Okay. And so let me go back here to let's see if it's is this how big one? is that mirror, Mike? 14 and a half inches. Uh -huh. well. So that's not a good one to, to look at. But um, but anyways, you can see here on the photograph, you know, if you can see it, you yeah. know, there's this dark streak through the middle and it's much more apparent visually than uh, with the camera. And so I think that could be causing me some grief. Um, so working on it. Uh, the guy, George, who sold me the interferometer is very helpful, gets back immediately, doesn't uh, ghost me like other vendors do. Um, um, I, with respect to the observatory, I need to build up something, uh, you know, add something to the bottom or the, the top or both to, to strengthen that, or else I'm dead mm -hmm. in the water. I've, I've just blown seven thousand dollars for nothing so, oh or is it six thousand oh, oh. yeah oh mm -hmm. yeah it's experience yeah yeah right <laughs> but anyways investment um, in education uh, well yeah, yeah. Uh, fortunately you are learning from my mm -hmm. experience uh, hopefully you i think go. you'll recover yeah but anyways you'll find the magic pill yeah yeah um, well, so I hope, he, Mike, I, I hope that he gets back to you with some reasonable answer. It shouldn't, you haven't had it. That. How long have you had the observatory? Um, it's going on a year and a half, two years, and I didn't put the doggone thing together for like about four or five months just because mm -hmm. it was building the bottom part. So um, that that's, yeah, that that's, that, I mean, he, he should make that good, uh, and he needs to fix that. He's going to have a lot of complaints. Oh, I, he it's... already has complaints about other things. <laughs> you yeah. go to the user. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a user group. There's a a blog or something like that, and most of, most of them are sort of like, I got this problem, I got that problem, um, and uh, well, let's see here. Oh, he, is this from? Uh, you want me to? Uh, you want to show something else? Yes. Mike? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold a second. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, oh. I thought you were. Yeah, no, I was going to show what, what's going on with what I'm doing right now. Okay. And so we can kind of talk about it. Now, what I'm have, what I'm doing right now, you know, I was kind of laughing about what, what Bob was saying about all the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, my other comment would be, you know, this is supposed to be a kit. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, we're not in a kit. So I get this. What I'm working on right now is getting this base ring down because this is in three pieces. Okay. And then here's the doorway right here that comes through right here. So when I got this stuff, I was thinking, well, it'll all be cut out and I'll just put it all together on the ground there and it'll just be just right. Oh, you silly boy. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty silly. That's pretty <laughs> silly. So then I found out that these ri these rings are not the right length. The cord links are not right for the three pieces right there. 
So I took a, uh, what I did is I ended up taking one of these uh, laser tape measures and I went around this thing because they're looking for 10 feet, two inches. So I went around the whole inside perimeter of this thing, taking the quarter inch off for the material and made it, uh, I, I got a pier in the middle of this thing, see? So it's not like I can take a circle and make a circle out of this thing with a string line. But I did use that and figuring the, uh, the that is a 12 inch pier <clears throat> i figured that into the formula of this thing and got this thing as close as i could to uh 10 feet uh two inches, inches. so then i took there's a there's a top piece if you put this together you've got your supports down here below the risers and then on top of that there's a ring this this is your top ring this is your base ring all right, so what I did is I laid the top ring alongside this guy and got it all lined up so I could get the holes because none of the holes are here. Then one of those things like, yeah, just put it in the hole where well, there's no holes. See, so everything has got to be match drilled. I had to cut a big chunk out of one of the third piece of this right here with a sawzall to get it to fit right. And uh, so I'm about right now between the top ring and the base ring i'm about a half half of an inch <laughs> radius out that's about as close as i could possibly get it the doggone thing i don't think over four feet that's going to be too big of a deal so then you know we were talking about the wheels so what you've got here this goes on the stationary portion it's the wheel ring and it's all aluminum it's, a, it's an all aluminum construction. You got your whatever it is, skateboard wheels are already on there. There's another part that goes on. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh boy, they give you a real lock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They show you how to change it if you want to get a bigger lock. But anyway, there's another ring that goes on top where the dome goes. See, it fits on top of this. So. I'm kind of pleased about this because I'm going to tell you right now, the main thing that I can see that's going to be the bugaboo is putting this wheel ring on top here. Once you get this wheel ring in and you get that thing level, I'd say the rest of it's going to be a piece of cake because the observatory is going to fit right on top of that thing. These are the panels that go on the side. Now, there might be a little problem with that if we're a half inch out of radius, but I'm just going to figure, well, we'll just make it make it do the best. Can you, can you send me the URL for that page you're sc scrolling through? Uh, yeah, I will. Thank you. Yeah, I will do that, Jerry. Yeah, I can do that. So anyway, <laughs> um, that goes around there. There's the door. Uh, you, then there's the skirts. These are the roof skirts. They shouldn't be too hard. I think they're probably going to need to be cut. All this stuff's going to have to be drilled. Like they say, there's holes in it. Nah, there ain't no holes. But once this is done here, you can see that right there. Then you put the, uh, the, the dome comes on here. Once you get the dome, fits right on. See, there's a ring that goes on the bottom of that dome. So you've got aluminum on aluminum is what I'm trying to point out. The dome bottom will have an aluminum piece that rides on that. That'll have your brush seal. Uh, and, uh, and so that goes right on top. So you basically you have something like this right here. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've got a, aluminum on aluminum. What is the hardware made from? Steel? All the hardware I am going to say most everything that I've seen is aluminum, except for the, the heart, the screws and stuff like that, which are stainless for the most part. So I'd say that everything has been thought out pretty well as far as that goes. What what bothers me about the whole thing is having the instructions are, you know, in such a sad state that no. they don't well, properly represent. No, the no the, these these people have next dome beat. Next dome only. Uh, <laughs> I took a took a page from IKEA. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but what I did like is when we had all this talk and we were talking about these domes and how they travel around. I do like the fact that it's going to be middle on middle. Uh, I think that's <clears> going to be of great value, even though it's aluminum. 
it's not it's not steel but i do believe that that's going to be a, a big plus uh my only problem is is that you know i'm i'm this is going to be tales from the crypt for me because you know, I'm just not doing that well. And I got a guy coming to help me, but he, I kind of have to show him everything because, you know, he doesn't know really that much about mechanical stuff, like using drills and stuff like that. So I have to show him a lot of stuff and the little techniques that I, I've learned along the way. So I'll show you something else here too, that I've got. Uh, if you're interested. Just quickly before you move on. Dick, I wanted to say that on the Pro Dome, uh, for an extra 600 bucks, you can have everything pre-drilled, which is what we had it done. So all oh. of the all the all of the uh, important holes are all been pre-drilled. So that saves an immense amount of time. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can get it. To, I got to get this thing set up. So I, here we go. Now, what I want to do now is um, go here and share that. Now, that right there was when we were talking about last week, we were talking about BDB 14 and 15. Those yeah. are the two. That's, that's from the last, the latest stuff that I've done right there. That's, that's your the, picture? Yeah, that's the picture that wow. I did. That right there that's what the np 127 is that's 660 millimeter focal length i think that's uh, 5.2 is what that is so mm -hmm. it's two that i think this is 14 here and this is 15 right here 15 is the kind of the bigger of the two nebulas okay so you know what I wanted to talk about, though, I've left this image on crop, and you'll notice that down here you have a linear pattern. Oh, yeah. And I can't figure out what it is. Now, it does this on my 10 inch astrograph, too. It's a little bit different of a pattern. Now, that's a thousand millimeter focal length at f3.9. Uh, and this one is, uh, it, it is 660 millimeters. It doesn't seem to do it on the red cap. Okay. Same camera. Same camera. See that now, now you're, you're kind of getting there, Bob, I think, because you look at the geometry of this thing and, it, and you're looking at the ain't optics. The ain't optics is going to do, be doing anything like that because uh, the optics would be spherical. So the, the effects that you would artifacts, artifacting that you would get would be some, some form of spherical uh, deal. Now, if you look at a single, uh, let's say a single frame, you can see that it's darker down there, like there's a vignetting thing going on. I suspect it's got to be in the camera. Yeah, you got and, a reflection off something. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. A reflection. Yeah. Okay, and, and it could be something as simple as the edge of the aperture in the uh, sensor. Yeah, yeah, like okay. So, and the other thing I thought too was flexure. For example, on longer focal lengths, now this may be less likely, but just a little sag in the camera body. You've got uh, extended battery pack on the back on the bottom of this thing, and the fact that it's only on one side. Uh, it could possibly be some flexure there going on so that the sensor <laughs> is not in full, uh, doesn't have full advantage of the optics for some reason. Rotate the I'll camera. Turn the camera over and see yeah. if it repeats. Yeah, right. that's a good, that's a very good idea. I think I might try that little check and see what's going on, see if I can yeah. figure out what, what is happening with the doggone thing because there's something something definitely weird going on there uh, but other than that it came out okay uh, i still have to work on the heart and soul i haven't even started on doing any of the because uh, it's a three panel but i am concerned with the heart and soul with the with the mosaicing is that i'm going to be losing some of my overlap and if i don't have 20 percent overlap at least then i can't uh, merge the two panels together mm -hmm. So I am a little concerned about that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Guys, I got to leave. I'll be seeing you the next time. Okay. okay Bob. More, Hopefully more that thing will be built. Stuff. Yeah. 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 No, next time maybe it'll all be there and I'll, I'll bring more pictures. 
Okay. So we'll see you later. Take okay, care, dude. Robert. Right. Right. Bye. Well, I, I hi there. My wad, so that's it for me. <laughs> okay, we, we have a visitor. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wang, did you have a question for us? Uh, no, I'm not a visitor. I was I was here for like the past two weeks. Oh, really? Okay. I was like, my name is Jerry. If you remember. All right, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was. I yeah, maybe it's because I did not use my my name here, so it's, it's my other name. But I, I was I, I was in your club, so not a visitor. So yeah, uh, did you go? Uh, did you go out? Uh, you were talking about going out to a place and doing some astrophotography. Did you get a chance to do that? Yeah, I did. I I went to the refu refugio beach. Yeah, right. I, I went there, and uh, I also went to another place that was called, uh, I think, La, La Cumber Peak. If you know, if you know this place. Yes. Yeah, the, the two places. I went there two places. It's just nice, yeah. I, I took some photos, yeah. Oh, great, great. What telescope yeah. did you have? I have Orion. A... You know Orion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Orion ED80, I think. Oh, oh, uh, the 80 millimeter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 80 millimeter. The, the graphite fiber job, right? Or this. I don't know what 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 are you talking about? It's it's like a, it's like a six hundred dollars, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That, I know which one you're talking about. That's a good scope. That's a really yeah. good scope to start with. That's a really good scope. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I I've used this scope for like uh, several years actually, but yeah, just a. Uh, but before using that, I, I do not even know how to use that. But now I, I fully know how to use that. So, yeah. So, so Jerry, can you share any of your photos with us using a share screen? Yeah, sure, sure. I can share. So, Excellent. let me show you. Um, this was, uh, let me show you. Need to have some music playing while this goes on. <laughs> Has anybody seen the comet? No. Uh, on the internet, I've seen it. I, <laughs> got, a, I, got, a, I got a picture. Of First of all, you have to well, have the clouds. I, I share my, yeah. This was uh, not with the scope. This was my camera. I used. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can see the mil Milky Way. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. really faint. It's really faint. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's Refugio Beach. Yeah. Yeah, that's Refugio Beach. And the other place is uh, I got some photo. I got this one. Uh, this one is uh, the only oh, one. Thirty-one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I found I found oh, it like for forty minutes. Forty minutes. Yeah. So one exposure for forty minutes is what you. No, 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 or, no. Or, no. Oh, oh, a quick forty minutes to find this object. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know if there's any faster way, but uh, it took me 40 minutes. And uh, it's, the problem with this is that there, there are like little, you know, it's not really round if you see the stars. Okay. I don't mean the alignment. Yeah, you weren't exactly aligned north. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's probably the problem. It's, uh, but I, I was actually, I, when I pulled a line, I was pretty sure I aligned to Polaris, but maybe I was off. So I don't know. Oh, oh Jerry, yeah. what is the type of mount that you have? I had a pretty good mount, actually. Like it's, it's an Orion, Orion Sirius, I think. Oh, Sirius, that's a good mount. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good mount. Yeah, it is. That's that's middle upper class. Yeah, I just. Mount. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Maybe it's it's still my polar alignment problem or another problem. I don't know. What I mean, uh, what was the length of your subs? 
It, it's like 20 seconds. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, if, if I get more shots, it's gonna be better. Like I got, I think a total of 15 minutes of exposure. If I got like a two hours, that would be better, you know? Mm -hmm. And this, these are some other ones. This one, this one's like a general okay. for. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, good and picture of Orion. Yeah. Star trail. Yeah. Oh, star trails. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all my photos. You're up on the top of the mountain there, right? Wow. Yeah, I was. I, hmm. I drove. I drove to the mountain. Yeah. Well, that's you're, really great, Jerry. Those are great. Yeah. You're Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. This is this is Comet uh, Leonard. Uh, this was taken with a unistellar. Now, um, what is the unistellar? What is that? That's that automated uh, one of the one of the two telescopes that are totally automated. It uh, it's a, it's like a four inch, four and a half inch telescope that um, prime focus camera that does plate solving and everything. And so uh, my, my friend, um, uh, we've had really lousy weather and he, he, I guess he got up in the middle of the night and saw that it was, hey, it's clear for a change. So he yeah. took the scope out <laughs> and took the picture. He said- he Who took the picture? Um, Randy Walker. Okay. Yeah. He's in uh, your club up there? Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, it's not visible to the naked eye. I'm not sure if it's binocular uh, viewable, but it's it's going uh, towards the sun in the morning and it'll be up in the, uh, you know, at sundown uh, pretty shortly at the end of this month. So it should be much. Yeah, it's heading south pretty fast. Yeah. So he, he he got lucky. I mean, it's been it's been cloudy and foggy. Um, a couple of nights ago on Saturday, we thought it was going to be a clear night at at sundown, and by six o'clock, it was like London fog. I mean, where you couldn't see across the street, and then you wait four you know, hours and it clears. It, it did. It did. <laughs> it became clear again. It was just like, and then in the and then later in the night. It got cloudy, not foggy. It's just really strange. So, anyways, pretty neat. Pretty neat. That's what. That's why I've been working on my mirror because <laughs> I have more luck working on that than uh, taking pictures. Um, I, I have a question actually. Uh, if anybody wants want to listen, is it's like I have a. Alptron uh, sky guider uh, tracker, I think. So I don't know if anybody of you know this equipment, but it's it's having a problem right now. And I'm trying to fix that. It's uh like it, like it's like a small small tracker that that, that you can directly connect your camera to, and uh, it's like a small mount, mini mount. And uh, the problem with that is it it the RA axis like always spins and it cannot really fix into a point. So I, I mean, I can't really take a photo of that because if I, if I put a camera on, it's not stable. It will just, just uh, like fall and then whatever. Yeah, just move freely, you know. What's the name of the tracker? It's called Altron Sky Gather. I can show it and put it down. Sky Guider Pro. I, oh, I Optron. Yeah. I, I don't know if any of you know this this equipment. Yeah, I Optron makes good equipment. Yeah, but I, I've never personally been uh, had any or worked with any of that. But they have a good reputation. Doesn't Chuck's uh, uh, use an I Optron? No, no I don't Chuck think so. Is, uh, astrophysics. Oh, astrophysics. That's right. Okay, of course. Yes. Sky Guider Pro, correct? Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's an ioptron. Uh, yeah, I've got it up. Go ahead and share, Mike. Oh, okay. Uh, let me, I need to, one second here, sorry. But Jerry, okay. your telescope is an Orion ED-80? Yeah, yeah, right. Orion ED-80. Somehow I got you guys min minimized all a second here. That's a good telescope, by the way. I have one of those. It's yeah. a two element, but it shows very, very little color. It's an excellent telescope. Yeah, I, 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 I like that scope. You, this is the one here, scope, right? Like it, yeah. yeah, it's here. this one. It's this one. Yeah. Uh... So, I, I, I tried to Google it, but I cannot really find like solution, you know. It's, it's fine. I'll, I'll just uh, try like maybe asking for like the, the customer support again. I mean, I, I already asked them for like two times. It's got an electronic polar finder too, so that should give good tracking i mean i mean there's like a polar scope on it so if you if you look into the polar scope it's just uh, like an equatorial mount uh, and you can align it to polaris <laughs> right good wide field views yeah it's it's, it's got a guiding um yes yeah it's got a guide, a guide port yeah, yeah. Guiding yeah. Port. So you should be you able to. A, you can use auto guiding in this one. Uh huh. So let's see what kind of a mount is it? Like a ball mount? Is it, what is that? No, no. Look at the second image. Yeah. That's a ball yeah, mount. You can, yeah. You can attach your yeah. camera onto it. Yeah. That ain't gonna fly for me. You want that? You want that thing locked in? Because if you change the perspective, especially if you're using, well, it's okay if you're using a lens that has, let's say, a longer focal length than the sensor size. But if you start using a lens that has a focal length that's less than the sensor size, then you're going to get projection issues. So you've got to lock that thing in really good. Yeah. And every frame has to be the same. You start changing the perspective of it, and you, you're going to get to the point where you can't stack the stars because the projection of the image is going to be so different. You may yeah. want to replace that with something more sturdy. Um, get get rid of the ball joint. There's other other things. I mean, it's more money, but uh, getting that to be super rigid will help you. Yes. I I, One I of the uh, mounts that I got in it had came with the balls ran like this. And you're right, they're kind of flimsy. And I, uh, out of China, I bought a uh, pan and tilt mount that is robust and uh, it cost less than 20 bucks. Huh. That's, That's what I got. Go look it up. I got a pan and I, I got a, I got a, well, it's, it's actually just a tilt mount. And I can just put that right on top of my, uh, uh, regular mount and use that uh, with the guide scope. What I do is I bought a slow motion adapter from uh, Orion, which actually has uh, vernier adjustments on a 40 turns per inch little thready things. And uh, I put that on top of my regular mount on one of the uh, uh, dovetail rails that I put up there. And uh, you can dial it right in. And then again, you can slew it. It, it works very well. The uh, Orion uh, slow motion adapter. I had a horrible time trying to find that because you wouldn't think that's what it would be called, but that's what they call it. Uh, yeah, actually, I have, I have another question. I'm curious that uh, because so if if I actually want to find like a deep sky object that is uh, really dark, like maybe like magnitude like five or six. Like, uh, can I still like see it clearly in the scope or like not really. I would probably say you might not be able to see it. A lot of the stuff, like that thing I showed last, uh, just showed tonight, that VDB 14 and 15, you can't see it in the viewfinder. 
and you can barely see it even in the stack. It isn't until I process it that I can actually bring out some of the detail in the image. Oh, okay. Uh, I would say a lot of the stuff in the deep sky category, you're not going to be able to see visually. Oh, there we go. That's it. Deep, yeah. Yeah, it's not one of those. After. Oh, wow. Oh, huh. wow. So that's not like a ball head. That's just like it's got individual little I like yeah, micrometers. A, a two axis micrometers. That's yeah. so freaking cool. I didn't even I ever saw that. It's cheap too. Wow. How much yeah. is that? Well, there you go. Oh yeah, forty dollars. Jeez, yeah. But I know now I'd probably bought that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a quarter twenty thread on the bottom, and it's got a rubbery uh, uh, yeah. platform. So it oh, that's one it. thing. Yeah, there's another thing too. When you mount these cameras and you mount them on a single screw head like that, you can still swivel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so what I do with mine is I put a jam nut in there too. So you jam yeah. it into the base and keep it from swiveling back and forth because otherwise you, you don't lock that thing in. You, it'll change the projection of the image. You yeah, it will. Nothing but five stars. Wow. I have been able to get a 500 star registration stack with uh, yeah, a 24 millimeter lens, which is about 70 degrees of field, looking at the Milky Way. And it plate solved too. So, you know, you can do it. You can do precision, precision stuff like that, but you got to you got to have the camera locked to the guide, guide star. There's just no other way. Uh, well, the, pic Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the picture that I took of the Milky Way that was on uh, the bookmark several years ago that Tom put on the bookmark was uh, that was a 105 degree field of view, 10 millimeter lens. Uh, I forgot the number of, of, a, of Nikon, but it's it is has no distortion. But uh, I took that again with a slow motion adapter. I was at uh, Figaro Mountain. It was a Sunday. And the, well, there's a horizon to horizon view of the Milky Way. So I took several shots of it. I got it all set up and then I did exactly what you talked about. I rotated the camera about the mount, about the, the, the quarter 20 nut that held it or the screw that held it on. And then in Photoshop, I put them all together. So it's a 205 degree field of view of the uh, Milky Way. That's good. That's really something. Um, so just a question. So if, for example, I want to photograph the horse head nebula, then like how, uh, how would I like find it? Even though I, I like I do not cannot see it. Well, it's near the star of the uh, Orion's Belt, the, the the leftmost one, just a little bit to the side. You have go to oh, mount. The question. What was the question? He's trying to find, he wants to be able to try to find the horse head nebula, and yet he can't see it. But you, you've oh. got a go to mount, right? Yeah, I call it go to mount. Yeah. yeah. But so I, then I, I you're don't think set. That's all, you gotta do, all you got to do is set your mount up and then go to the horse head nebula, yeah. and you should be fine. Now, yeah, find, I don't find know. a star near it that you know and go to it from that star. That's the yeah, most that's accurate. what I was going to suggest is that when you do your star alignment, I don't know if you use a single star versus three stars, you know, whatever you do. I use single star, but I always try to shoot, uh, choose a star that uh, for the alignment that's very near where the target's going to end up. Oh, right? okay. So okay. that way you're not going to be too far away. And the other thing, too, is make sure that when you do your star alignment, you do a star alignment on the same side of the meridian that you're going to shoot on. Oh, OK. You know, um, okay. let me comment that my the software, not mine, but the software that I use for camera control, which is Nebulosity, it has a quickie, quick look capability. They call it um, focus and framing. And so you can't see the object, but you give it a few seconds exposure and it comes up faint enough can see where it's going to be in your field of view and then you can move around a little bit with the fine controls till you get it framed right in your field oh okay i see i see i yeah, see that's, 
that's kind of nice. I do that just by taking regular exposure and then moving yeah. it. But yeah, it's the same deal, except it takes less time. <laughs> so, so I guess if if the go to mount is uh, accurate enough, then you do not need to move actually once you yeah. got the target. Yeah, this you is, should be good. This and is then a, what you can. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say once you get there, and let's say if it's a little off, you can always you know take an exposure and say, oh, okay, I gotta move it a little bit. Yeah. You know, and then That's just use do. take a bright star in that image, uh, which there should be a really bright one fairly near there with that uh, other nebula that's that's real close with the star there. So because yeah. you got one of the belt stars. So okay. you should be able to just, you know, basically uh, look at that star and go, okay, I want that star in this, this yeah. place right here. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You know, the uh, Stellarium program has a way of entering your camera's sensor size, and it'll show you the uh, area yeah. of the sky that you'll get inside your sensor. That's kind of a neat way to go. Yeah, that's I do that too with the star seat stuff that I've got. It shows you you can put the rectangle size. Yeah, sensor. there's an app on my iPad called Astro Aid that I use for that. Put in various scopes that I have or want, and see what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. So let me let me add. I sent um, I sent Tom just a few minutes ago two photos by email. Uh -oh. of, of my observatory under construction. Oh, yeah. And the target that we're headed for. Let me see if I can find that, Jerry. My observatory so far. Let's do let's save to Jerry. Okay, that's got one that, what, oh. What's the other one called, hopefully? Yeah, the other one's hopefully. It's the end game, the target. Uh, okay, uh, let's see, share screen. Share that. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's the one we're trying to build. Oh, okay. That's I not mine. That no, but that's the model we're following. I couldn't get one exactly the size and shape to fit in my backyard and to my neighbor's um, contentment. So we're going to base our design on this model. So it'll look very much like that. But none of these false okay. windows, I think. And uh, then you can see the other one shows where we are in that process. Yeah, like, hold on just a second. Get that. Um, I sent there. you the Milky Way picture. That's a going back one level. But. Yeah, I've got that too. Let's see. So far. Oh my God. A little bit of it. trenching going on, Jerry. Yeah, the uh, the, uh, oh, the, electrical. The, the square pattern back there in the corner is the footprint of the roll-off roof observatory. The, the trench coming toward us that um, goes um, off and wise the one that he's going up and down now, that's power from the house that goes out through an electrical conduit. And the other one going off to the left, that one's a cat six cable that's going down to uh, our modem room where we have the modem. And we're also having the back wall covered with uh, stone fascia, which is almost done now. You have a big backyard. Uh, oh, this is a wide angle lens. Oh. <laughs> we have a what very... We have this view over the back. There's a little tower, a little uh, water tank up here on the left, on the rolling hill to the left. That's actually a cell tower. Um, rockets from Vandenberg go up just to the left of that tower. Oh, wow. And, and um, when we went at night, we have virtually no lights out here at all. So I have. Um, Except for street only, lights. It's only the, we have street lights. And I got to talk to them. They changed from really good um, light shields on the light. Now they changed to one that sends a beam directly into my bedroom. So I'm going to talk <laughs> to them about that. Well, light <laughs> trespass. Yeah. You can... So anyway, this is I a very a part of the sky. 
I have Pardon? a neighbor whose streetlights, I said, I have a neighbor whose streetlights don't bother him. They seem to end up with 22 caliber holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes out, the, it goes and lays down directly underneath him and, and shoots them so that there's, they can't trace the tra trajectory of where it came from. Very clever. <laughs> Yeah, and but he said, one of the times the, the guys came something. out to replace the center unit, they shook it and rattled. And they said, I've never heard that before. I've seen that before. <laughs> I'm sure that they've heard it before. Other people I know have taken that um, yeah. on off switch route. Okay. Let me show uh, Bruce's Milky Way here. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you can see the airplane that came across there in the lower right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this, is this Santa, Santa Barbara? Santa over? Maria. Go yeah, ahead. Santa Maria? Right. Santa Barbara mm -hmm. on the other side. Hmm. That was cool. And where did you take this from? Uh, Figueroa Mountain. Okay. I forgot that it was a Sunday. I, I could look up. Actually, I, oh, I'd have to go back and find the original. I was at, we were at an outreach on Saturday, and the sky was just absolutely stunningly <laughs> clear. Mm -hmm. And Sunday looked like it was going to be the same. So I packed up and went to Figueroa Mountain. Got a yeah. lot of good pictures, this being one yeah. of them. That's neat. Very nice. So that, and, and Bruce, that was a Nikon 800 or what is that? Uh, I think I used the D5200 on this. That was before I got the D, uh, D700. D500, what am I saying? D500. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting tonight. That does it for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you have a good call. Call. yeah, got to go. Yep. All right, guys. Wish, Bye -bye. wish me Please. luck. Good Bye. meeting, Bye. Ed, Ed. Next time, I guess we'll get okay. to work. All right, talk to you guys Bye. soon. Bye. In meeting for all.